What's up, y'all? My name is Devonte, and I sacrificed my time so you don't have to. Offer up really quick before we get into the video. Honestly, this is more of a replacement video, but it's something that I really do want to talk about also. But given that I'm about to go to work in a little bit, and tomorrow my truck is going to be huge, and I got to go in early on that day, and Tuesday most likely I have to finish that off. And with Wednesday and dynamite and everything occurring at the moment, and how I had to go to work yesterday with all the fucking shit that I was going, I'm swamped, guys. I'm super duper 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 swamped. I promise you the retro review. I'm going to do that instead on Thursday, and you'll get another retro review right after that, that upcoming Sunday. We'll be good. We'll be fine. Do not worry. Unforgiven 2000. I will have the review ready for it on Thursday. I'm way, way, way too swamped and I'm way too busy right now to record that and still keep up with the commentary and still do the rest of the reviews while still working. It's just, it's just way too much at the moment. I could have done it yesterday, but between my job and between having to review Backlash, it's, it's not going to work. I, 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 I try to fit it in, but it's not. But I'll have it ready for Thursday. Don't worry. But let's talk about this real quick. Dave Meltzer coping super fucking hard at the moment. When I say this man is coping, I mean this man is coping. He is like Adam Copeland's twin brother. He is coping so fucking hard. Check this shit out, bro. We're going to talk about it after we actually read the article. When I tell you this man is so goddamn vague also about this, it makes absolutely no sense to be this vague. That's almost to the point of embarrassment, bro. You got to do better, Dave. You got to do better. Link is on the description box below. Dave Meltzer analyzes AEW's ratings decline. Three years ago, AEW's ratings were sky high. By September of 2021, AEW Dynamite had officially demolished WWE NXT, sending WWE's third slash developmental brand scurrying back to Tuesday nights and the, oh, I'm going to botch this, ignominy, I think, of, re, of being rebranded as NXT 2.0. Dynamite's overall viewership numbers were surging to the point that they weren't that far behind those of WWE Raw. On overall viewership in Dynamite had actually started beating Raw in the key 18 to 49 demographic. In 2024, the situation is very different. And Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter <laughs> thinks he knows why. I'm oh, sorry, because I already read this article before, and just the thought of what Dave said here is so fucking ridiculous. It's not what he said that he's not wrong. Here, let me read it for you. You'll see what I mean. According to Dave Meltzer, the biggest part of AEW's decline has been the drop in the viewership in the 18 to 34 age range, as it's a pattern group that will follow trends and fads, which in wrestling often leads to wrestlers, shows, and the and entire companies gaining momentum. In 2020, Chris Jericho was using AEW's success and this specific demographic to take gloating shots at the competition, going so far as to call himself the Demo God. You guys remember that? Meltzer also touted AEW's 18 to 34 ratings at the time, claiming that AEW would have been <laughs> would have damn it <laughs> wait would have been beating WWE in that metric if not for the competition from NXT. Now Meltzer says the numbers tell a different story. AEW's ratings in the 18 to 34 demographic have collapsed while WWE's are now strong. And I quote from Meltzer, it's a group hard to reach for television, but very valuable. Meltzer wrote, and with AEW in contract season, what they had that was very valuable is what they've lost in the last two months. Meltzer also dove deeper into the ratings from the May 1st block of programming as there was a steep drop between the end of AEW Dynamite and the start of AEW Rampage. Meltzer believes the Rampage brand has a negative aura around it as some fans, particularly men, have come to see the show as skippable. Okay, that's the end of the article right there, by the way. Dave, Dave, come, come here, bro. Come here. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. We fucking know that <laughs> you vague son of a bitch no no explain to us because we all know why aew is failing it's because they're losing numbers what kind of fucking explanation is that whoa <laughs> the water is wet because it's water like what the fuck no shit their numbers are dropping because they're not getting the same type of viewership they were previously no shit what the actual fuck, bro? Tell us 
the reason why they are no longer in the same position as to where they were almost three years ago. Hyundai, because what I believe is that there are multiple of factors as to why they're no longer in that position, and uh, a good chunk of that has to do with you. Now, strictly speaking about AEW themselves, I think particular, I mean, obviously we can talk about the creator, but again, we'll get to that in a little bit. Like I said, CM Punk, in my opinion, overall, when looking at the overall context, I personally don't believe he is a draw overall when you look at his numbers in comparison to AEW versus WWE. There is a pattern that shows that there is a ceiling for CM Punk when he doesn't have a, when he doesn't have a legitimate machine behind him. That's when WWE comes into the picture, right? You want proof? Go look at the YouTube numbers. Go look at the numbers as far as how they were dropping since CM Punk started in the company in 2021. Obviously, you can see that on his own going out there without the WWE machine, you can see that CM Punk isn't a draw. But within the context of AEW in particular, he made a difference in their ratings and within their viewership numbers. With him being gone, he took his fans with him to WWE. That right there is a negative impact on you, Tony. Now, uh, should we talk about the reasons why CM Punk left or we've gone down that road so many times it's getting kind of boring? Okay, let's let's just keep continuing because we know why CM Punk left and it has everything to do with the decision making of Tony Khan. So, uh, whose fault is that? Is that my fault? Your fault for leaving? Or is that the guy who didn't provide the... <clears throat> he didn't provide the product that you wanted to, you know, get your hands on that you wanted to see. And he's now in the competitions camp. Same thing can be said about Cody Rhodes, by the way. So let's put that to the side. Because then we come to the nitty gritty as far as Dave Meltzer, apparently and allegedly. And you all know this. We've all known this to be the case. And now it's been confirmed a couple of months ago that Dave Meltzer has actively been giving Tony Khan advice. But see, here's the caveat. This is his first time actually giving Tony Khan advice, you know, throughout the years, face to face or phone call to phone call. You go look at Tony Khan and you can probably catch him somewhere on some AOL messaging board from 1996 going forward talking about, did you guys see that Okada match? Yeah, Okada wasn't even born yet, but you get the gif, right? Oh, the French, hey, you, 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 okay, fine. We'll say Masawa. How about that? Did you see the Masawa Kobashi match? It was rated six stars by Dave Meltzer. And you use that mindset, you use your markish mindset as far as how things were rated by Dave Meltzer, and you took that mentality that Dave Meltzer made a talking point within the wrestling community going throughout the past 30 to 40 years, and you ran with that in order to build your wrestling company. He's been taking advice from Dave Meltzer years before running a wrestling company years upon years upon years before running a wrestling company you guys think i'm fucking kidding when i say i would not be surprised go to tony khan's house right now i bet somewhere in his attic you go look in his box there's a psp somewhere lingering inside there and on there is smackdown uh, smackdown versus raw 2006 and i'm telling you right now there's a general manager mode saved about 20 years deep into the fucking mode i'm telling you this dude Almost everything that has come from the mind of Tony Khan that has been instituted within AEW first came from the mind of a Dave Meltzer. And then you hear these years going forward, how much advice Dave Meltzer gave to Tony Khan afterwards. Oh, Tony, you should do this. Oh, Tony, the temple of how you should retire staying. That's a real thing, by the way. Go Google it. All these advices that you've been given Tony Khan over the past five or so years as far as how he should actually do AEW. Consistently trying to enable his son of a bitch's mentality while his company is on a downtrend by giving him award after award after award based off of your fans and your mark own mentality. Dave, what part do you not understand that you yourself are the catalyst as to why Tony Khan's company is currently going down in the dumps at the moment? But here's the thing. I guarantee you, Dave absolutely understands that he's the reason why Tony Khan is going down in the dumps. Because almost every superstar that was signed with the company, almost every decision Tony Khan made was at the behest of a Dave Meltzer. I guarantee you, bet money, bet my fucking life. You guys tune in to uh, Brian Alvarez and, you know, Dave Meltzer and them talking and stuff like that. You want to bet money that Tony Khan probably has them on repeat? He's probably listening to them right now as we speak. He's probably ruining the Jaguars and taking down notes as far as how he can fuck up more of his team 
players or whatever the case may be. And in the background, you hear Dave Meltzer, y y I don't know, uh, you know, uh, I know, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't know, uh, uh, I know, you know. I guarantee you, you can hear Dave Meltzer in the background while Tony Khan is jotting notes as to how to ruin the Jaguars franchise going forward. And that's just on the positive side, right? On the negative side, you guys think you're listening to Jim Cornette? If you got, you got me like, Tony Khan is Jim Cornette's biggest supporter. He listens to fucking Dave Meltzer to get the yin, and he listens to Jim Cornette to get the yang. He does not think for himself at all. And even for the criticisms that come from a Jim Cornette, he doesn't take that and run with it. A guy who actually has been in the business, a guy who actually, you know, competed you know, a guy who was in his position on a lower scale for years. But that's how Tony Khan thinks. But back to Dave Meltzer, because you want to be vague and you want to talk about water is wet. That's why it's wet without actually going down the things as far as what you've done to poison the mind of this man, to believe that what he's currently doing within the wrestling business is the right thing. Do we, shall we, can we actually engage with what you actually poison this man's mind with? As to believe that he can never go outside the skirts of what he actually should be using as a businessman to connect with said 18 to 34 demographic fans. Let's go down the list for a second. Uh, more focus on wrestlers who can just wrestle. Not actually, you know, get on the microphone and talk because even the wrestlers that you get who actually know how to do that to a certain degree, you don't feature them every week to actually, you know, accentuate that positive about them throughout the card to get people to want to watch onto the show because you're so busy promoting more five star matches, right? You're so busy going out of your way to hire superstars who do stuff like that, hire superstars who just know how to wrestle. And then you take all the stuff, all the promises, all the prizes that you should be using to goad people and to want to watch the pay-per-view. You take all that and then you put it on the regular show and you do it on a week in to week out basis, right? So never mind the fact that you completely undercut even the ha like 90, what, let's just say, 5%, I was going to say 95, but actually 5% of the talent who actually have character, who actually know how to talk in the microphone, you undercut their value, right? To talk people's asses into the seats because you're so busy promoting the matches and they're having matches that should be happening on pay-per-view that you're going to have people talk in order to get people to want to watch the show to see said match. Nine times out of 10, you showed it one time. If anything, maybe you missed the week. And you want people to tune into that show that has no heat on it, who's going to wrestle a match on a pay-per-view that probably won't even be better than their last few television matches while not giving any reason to have any heat. You see what I'm saying? It's such a jumbled up fuckery because Dave Meltzer has one way of thinking. Dave Meltzer is not a promoter. Dave Meltzer is not a booker. He may want to pretend to be a booker, but he is not a booker. Dave Meltzer is just like me. The only difference is that, you know, I can't even say anything about journalistic integrity nowadays, given his complete L street that's been going on this past few couple of months. But let's give him that caveat also. Let's be nice and let's just say he has the title of journalist. Okay, cool. You get to go meet people and talk to people that I don't have access to. Congratulations. Now, when you take all that stuff that you were to be able to cite from other people, good. That's awesome. Even though you never do it consistently well, I'll give that to Sean Ross Sapp. I won't give that to Dave Meltzer. Whether or not I hate both guys, I'll go to Sean Ross Sapp before I go to Dave Meltzer. But take all that, wrap it into a bundle, and then boom, you give that information. What follows that information is what I have a problem with because then you give your opinion. And who else gives their opinion? I give my opinion. The rest of the IWC gives their opinion. People in the comment section, they give their opinion. And what does your opinion consist of? Your opinion consists of consistently taking what you feel is the best in professional wrestling and never tweaking it. And you haven't tweaked it in the past 40 years because your main focus is your star system. Your main focus is how do we be able to gain this type of rating right here never mind how many people are actually in the audience to see this match never mind how many people are tuning in to want to watch this match it's how do we make this match good and then boom everything else just gets shut out of you right you see that's the problem that a dave Meltzer has is never really focusing on anything outside of how good a match can be right 
And then Tony Khan sees this and he thinks to himself, he's speaking to me. Surely, are you seeing this? He's speaking to me, my heart. And then you cultivate this little mindset and obviously people within your bubble when you go in your AOL chat rooms back in the 90s and now we have come full circle and now we're in the Twitter realms and now you have people circling you, kissing your ass, taking ideas that Dave Meltzer most likely gave you in order to put on television. You take all those ideas and what do we know? We have a big old circle jerk of AOL in 1995 coming up in the present time, right? We got the RSWPV, whatever those motherfuckers are called. In real time on Twitter. But here's the thing. How many of you people exist within your bubble? And never mind your bubble. Because it's already bad enough that it's such a good old boys club. It's such an elitist club. No pun intended. That it's it's gatekeeping. And, and you are only a big wrestling fan if you like the wrestlers that I like. And if you just stereotypically look at the things that I like. And look how many flips and kicks and dives and sell jobs that they're doing at the moment. That's all that matters in wrestling. And if you don't like that, well, guess what? That means you're not a big enough wrestling fan. So never mind the fact that you eliminated so many things out of that camp. You have now brought in to said camp after eliminating all that outside of said camp a very narcissistic self-righteous almost arrogant conceited nature into all of this while alienating everything that we need in order to make professional wrestling good whether that's storytelling whether that's actually looking at how the person looks who fits that mold in order to tell said story because we are in the end of the day watching professional wrestling i use this metaphor all the time there is no woman in the world who will buy a product now granted if it's a legacy product that's different no different than you wanting to tune in to wrestling if you see austin and rock no matter what stupid shit they do it's austin and rock but a new superstar a new company no different than looking at a new brand there is no startup brand worth its salt that think it's a good idea to put out a woman product right let's just say in macy's you have a startup project and they want to see how much they can sell you think in the right you think in their right mind that they're gonna put a transgender guy in front of that box a guy with a beard and an adam's apple who has a wig on dressed like a woman saying buy this product right here you think any woman is gonna buy that product from that startup brand are you out of your fucking mind so when I look at professional wrestling, I say to myself that certain things do have to fit a mold. Certain things do have to fit a certain identity in order to even begin to want to tell that story. And it's okay to venture off and be a little spontaneous here and there. And who knows? Maybe it might sell. Maybe a wrestler might get over. But you don't make that spontaneous thought process, that spontaneous idea, the identity of your company that is completely going against the norm of professional wrestling from a fundamental standpoint. And it seems that Dave doesn't understand that. And apparently he passes that off to Tony Khan. And we get this whole big circle jerk of general manager mode happening throughout AEW. And then you ask yourself when consistently doing that. While ignoring the fact that you brought in guys like CM Punk as to why your company even blew up to fucking begin with, and now that CM Punk is gone, and now that people have seen your product and got too, and got too, um, how do I put this, got too uh, used to CM Punk around where now his drawing power is starting to falter a little bit because you're not giving him any good creative, people literally have no reason to want to watch your show. Your shtick is dead. Your shtick is gone. And now you have no big time players in the free agent market. You can say as much as you want to and say that Will Ospreay and, and fucking Okada and Mercedes happen to be. Well, yeah, sure. Within your little closed circle bubble, but within the real world, no one knows who the fuck any of those three people are. So you have no free agent pulled a dick from in order to put you back into a position after killing that already, because all you fucking do in order to have a surge in popularity for that one week is still a WWE talent or I'm sorry, buy a WWE talent. So, fucking sloppy seconds over here. You literally have nothing going for you at all to the degree that you have right now a decent story that has yet to really been fully even told. But look at the people who are playing those parts right now in your biggest angle right now at the moment. It's a bunch of fucking geeks. It's a bunch of fucking unimposing looking, looking dorks. Dorks. You get what I'm trying to say. Fuck. Time twisted there. On top of the fact that you already ran a bunch of people off from the product already. It's, it's over, bro. I keep saying it over and over again. Until you figure out an actual star 
in order to put over the product that you currently have at the moment until that you put the pieces together in order to make that storyline work after doing the work to get people to want to watch your program which has to happen first no one cares that's the reason why the 18 to 34 demographic is gone it's not simply there's no 18 to 34 watching your product we all know that dumbass what you want to know and what i want to know what we all want to know which we all have the answer to you just don't want to say it is that it was your ideas dave that tony khan used in order to virtue signal to wrestling fans as to why you no longer have that audience cope as much as you want sit back and pretend that hasn't occurred it has occurred and it's your fault you are the mastermind behind tony's downfall how ironic right the guy who was the biggest inspiration happens to be the one who causes the demise <sighs> let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below i mean not to steal a line from cm punk but tell me where i'm telling lies am i saying anything wrong anybody have a disagreement with what i'm saying go ahead let your thoughts know down in the comment section below i need to get up out of here i'll be talking to you guys later don't forget the retro review for um what's the show called again uh, unforgiven 2000 it's gonna be on thursday not today i'm sorry i know life sucks you'll be okay deuces p eyes